this more than likely will be a quite lengthy video, much longer than my usual videos. So be patient, you know, go get your tea, uh, your soda, your orange juice, your water, um, and be prepared for some interesting information if you find this to be interesting. Now, before I start, i like for you guys to subscribe. I would like for you guys to share this video. I would like for you guys to click on the PayPal link on the bottom and support this channel. I would also like for you guys to click on the Teespring link in the description box and order some of my supplies. But I want to deal with a comment. On one of my videos, the video regarding the young black youth in Las Vegas that was selling water and was placed in a chokehold. There was a comment that says, you need to understand that the Constitution was not designed for us. And that this country is not ours. I completely understand that. Then he says. There will be a time, but not right now. And then he says, we live the curses of Deuteronomy. Now, I hear quite a few so-called black Americans. I hear so many so-called Hebrew Israelites say the same thing. They harp more on the curses of the Bible than they do the blessings. As a matter of fact, I never hear them talk about the blessings. What does it take to receive the blessings of the Most High? It's like you're automatically cursed because your skin is melanated according to the way they teach. They teach and dwell on the doctrine of curses. So whenever something negative happens to a so-called black American, although it may happen to another race of, uh, race of people, although it may happen to a Chinese man, Chinese woman, Arab man, uh, Arab woman, white man, so-called white woman, when it happens to us, it's because we're cursed. It's because we're in a land that's not our own. But what many black Americans don't realize, or so many so-called Hebrew Israelites, what they don't realize is those curses in the book of Deuteronomy does not apply to all melanated people. I'm going to repeat that. It does not apply to all melanated people. All melanated people don't fit that description. All melanated people don't deal with the curses of the book of Deuteronomy. But yet there are many that do. Is that that the most high show in favor towards some and not all? Or is it because of the fact that as it said in his word, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. So he's given us the option to choose whether we want to receive the curses or the blessings. There are young men that I know of, so-called black men, that look forward to going back and forth to prison. For whatever reason, these young black males that that's not afraid or claim that they're not afraid to die. So they take dangerous chances in life, robbery, murder, rape, incest. They feel they can do anything they want 
to, and if they get arrested, I've been there before. So those are people that have accepted the curse for themselves. And then there's other so-called black Americans. And I say that not the curses of Deuteronomy don't apply to all so-called black Americans or melanated people because a lot of them don't really know who they are. They don't realize that they are not descendants of slaves. And I know that may be hard for a lot of so-called black Americans to swallow because they like to link all of us back to Africa. They like to link all of us back to the slave trade. But all of us didn't experience that. All of us don't have ancestors that experienced that. Some can go back and say, I have ancestors that were slaves and they can take you right back to the plantation where their ancestors died. And then you have others that can't do that. Why? Because they don't share the same experiences. Now, in modern times, we all don't ex don't share the same experiences because you have so many so-called black Americans that to this day experience captivity because they're in and out of the judicial system. They're in and out of prison, both male and female, even your children, this generations of criminals in the black community. I can name family, crime families that I know of where they have generations of children that's drug dealers, gangbangers, in and out of prison, murder, rape, incest, generations. And there's a whole bunch of them. And then there's this family where they've never experienced that. They don't have the same experience. And I mentioned in a video of the past that I can't share with a lot of the experiences that the so-called black Americans experience. That's not saying I'm better. But what I can say is that I don't share the curses of the book of Deuteronomy. Again, the Most High says, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. But unfortunately, you have the so-called black Americans that focus more on the curses and rarely speak of the blessings. And those that are blessed, they tend to attack. You think you're better than we are. You're a goody two-shoe. You're not better than me. And then they physically or violently want to attack them. Or like on social media, they want to verbally attack them. If you don't think like I think, if you don't play the victimhood role or mentality, then you're a coon, you're an Uncle Ruckus, you're an Uncle Tom, you're a bootlicker, you're a shine. All of these negative words that they use for each other when we don't share in the same curses that they've accepted for themselves. It's not that God is doing that to them. They're doing it to themselves because they choose that curse for themselves. Because he says, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Now, that's not saying that bad things won't happen to you in this lifetime. I don't think there's not one individual on this earth that did not experience injustice at some level or another. I don't think there's one individual on this earth that have not experienced death or misfortune or lack. It's a part of life. It doesn't mean that you're cursed. That could just be a test of your strength to see 
if you're going to stay there or if you're strong enough to get up. Now, I want to share, because I really don't speak too much of my personal life on the Internet. You have to be careful what you put out there because not everybody uh, can receive information because they would take it. As a matter of fact, the scriptures tells you not to cast your pearl before swine because they would take that information and turn and rend you. We see that happening with President Trump. He says something, the media would twist it, make it seem like it's a bad thing or make it seem like he's a bad person. But let me go back to the moment I was born. Now, I was born December 28th. The time I'm not going to give you. But it was after 12 o'clock midnight. December 28th, I was born a breech baby. I was born feet first. My mother and father, oh, and I want to back up when we talk about ancestry and uh, being from Africa and all this. I'm not saying that I don't have ancestors that's linked to the continent, but I know I have a lot of uh, ancestry here on this land. So I'm native to this land. Just want to make that perfectly clear. And according to my mother, We have no slaves in our family. And I'm going to say that we know of. And she sternly rebuked me when I, I'm like, so who, who, who were slaves? Do we have any great, there's no slaves in our family. We don't have no slaves in our family. And I said, well, what about dad? We ain't no slaves in our family. That's what she said. And she's much older than me. She was here before me. So either she don't know or she knows, right? So I can only take what she say. But going back to the moment I was born, my mother and father, my father didn't have the money. Like when my mother went into labor, he didn't have no insurance. And the doctors or the hospital refused to bring me into this world because he had no insurance. He had no money. So there was an army doctor. My mother was in labor. But there was a foreign army doctor that happened to be there. He was on his way out. And when he learned that my mother was in labor and that the hospital refused um, to help her because... My father had no insurance. He asked my father, he says, how much do you have on you? And I think my father had, and I I know I got this number wrong, but I think my father had like seven bucks on him. And he said, is that all you have? And my father said, yes. So the army doctors, a foreign army doctor told my father, well, just give me that. So he took the the seven dollars and he brought me into this world. So after he brought me into this world, he says to my mother, he says, you know, you have a very blessed son. Now, keep in mind, this doctor brought me into the world. You have a very blessed son. I was a breech baby. As a matter of fact, when they, when the doctor delivered me, um, I think he broke my arm. He broke one of my arms because I was breech, you know, so I was in the womb twisted. I was in an awkward position, right? So he broke my arm to get me out. But when I was born, I was also born with what they call, the older folks call a veil over your face. And when the doctor brought me out, he told my mom, she says, you have a very blessed son. He said, now, and it's almost like I came with instructions. <laughs> he said, well, you know, he's going to see things. And he's going to have dreams and visions. 
and he's going to have a blessed life, right? So he was just telling my moms what to look out for. And I said to my mom, I said, the doctor told you that? I said, doctors can tell you stuff like that. Like, you know, you know, your, your child is going to see things, you know, he's going to have dreams and visions and your child is blessed. This is what's going to, this is how his life going to be. But that was a doctor. Growing up, I was having all kinds of dreams, visions. I spoke on this in, in prior videos before I uh, deleted my last channel, uh, The Fearless 2005. But I, growing up, knew nothing about God. We didn't go to church. You know, every now and then, maybe on Easter, we went to church, you know. But I didn't know nothing about the scriptures. But on another level, I was in tune with the Most High. I was in tune with the universe. I knew that there was a God there, right? I wasn't taught that. But I just knew there was something, a part of me, in my spirit that knew that God was real, that God existed. So I had dreams, I had visions, I've seen demons, I've seen angels, just different things growing up, right? So coming up throughout life, normal child, went to school. Um, after I graduated from school, um, I was thinking about, I wanted to go to college, okay? But I ended up going into the military. Had the opportunity to travel the world, right? with the other countries, and that's where my appreciation for this country comes in because I was asked, you know, why do I defend America so much? Now, I know America's not perfect. America has a history of a lot of evil and corrupt things, but this is my home. This is where I was born. This is all I know outside of the other countries that I visited, the other countries that I've lived for a very short time. But at the end of the day, this is home, right? There's nothing like America. And I've learned that just by traveling the world, being in other places. I know that this is the most, this is the greatest country on this planet. Now, you may go to other places and find it beautiful and it's a good place to vacation and visit. But at the end of the day, you always end up coming back to America, right? So I've learned a great respect for this country. Not saying I like all of the racism, discrimination, the hate, the politics that go on here. This is home, right? So I can relax here. I feel safe here. Now, that's my experience. I don't know about what you experience, but that's my experience. So travel the world, man. And I remember being over in Germany and me and some other some other dudes, man, we got off, we came off base, we went to this guest house, right? That's like a bar, restaurant, whatever. So we walked in, and I told this story before. We walked inside, and there was a woman, a gypsy woman. She was the only one sitting in there. She was sitting at this table, and she had a cup of tea or coffee or whatever. But the moment I walked inside that gust house, man, although I was with other dudes, man, I was with several other dudes, she kept watching me. And it was it made me a little uneasy because I'm like, yo, man, why does chick keep looking at me, man? It was a real old, old woman, man. She looked like she had to be over 100. That's how old she looked. She had like, you know, like that gypsy-like nose and that head rag on her head. So she kept looking at me, right? So I ordered... My Venus Nissel, Palm Fritz, Fanta, and all this, whatever. So I'm sitting there waiting on my food, and she asked me, she says, can I read your palm? And I said, sure, right? Because I wasn't into religion or anything like that, man. So I'm like, sure, I was open to that, right? So I'm like, sure, no problem. So she read my palm, and she told me, you know, I was going to have you know, two children, one before marriage, I mean, one before marriage, one after marriage, I'm going to have a long life, and I was very rich, and she was just telling me that I was really rich, the same thing, or similar things that the doctor said to my mother when I was born, and she said, I was very rich, anything I put my heart, my mind to do, I can do it, I was blessed, and all this stuff, right, so I didn't really think too much about it, it stuck in my heart, so I moved on, right, so, got out of the military, you know, um, ended up going back to school, you know, attended Syracuse University and uh, community college, you know, for, for, for certain things, whatever, you know, there's certain things I wanted to do. So, 
either I went to Syracuse University, went there for psychology and, um, you know, some other stuff. And then, you know, another community college for like computer support, you know, or and then another one for photography, right? So I ended up working in corporate America for a while, started my own business, you know. Um, so everything in my life, man, has always been positive. Everything just, you know, like was predicted or prophesied. It came, it comes to me easy. I never had a problem. So a lot of things that so-called black Americans experienced, I've never experienced that. Now, some may say like, well, just because the white man gives some crumbs and all this other nonsense, the white man gave me nothing. As a matter of fact, everything that I have, I worked for it and I earned it. And nobody gave me anything, you know, and I think that's the problem with a lot of so-called black Americans is that they want things for nothing. They want free stuff. And that's why they remain on the demon crap plantation. So in other words, I got into the church and my life has been good, man. It's like, you know, I, I cut it short because there's just so many, so much that happened in my life, man. And I can't ever think of anything that would resemble a curse in my life. So I can't accept these curses, you know, and just because it's written because and if you notice, the first thing that the, the book of Deuteronomy 28 talks about are the blessings. There's more curses that you receive than you would do the blessings if you make the choice to go opposite to the most high. Now, I'm going to read, I'm going to read Deuteronomy 28 and I'm just going to read the blessings here. Deuteronomy 28, starting at the first verse, it reads as follows. Now, this is something that the Hebrew Israelites never talk about. They harp on the curses. So, black Americans are walking around cursed. They're defeated. And even those that are not cursed, and that's why we see a lot of these so-called celebrities that's millionaires, almost billionaires still playing the victimhood mentality. I don't know if they're doing that to try to feel or make the black Americans feel like I'm still with you and I can identify with you, but you're not. You're in a totally different class, man. You, you can go anywhere you want to go. You don't have to stay here. As a matter of fact, there are celebrities that did move out of this country. They chose to go to the continent and live. Although they can't tell you who their their relatives are. You know, they can't tell you who their people are. They just go back there because it makes them feel good. And who's to say, if you go to Ghana, who's to say you're, you're Ghana? Who's to say your ancestors are from Ghana? Who's to say your ancestors are from South Africa? It's just the thought of being in Africa around other people that's not like you. But Deuteronomy, the first chapter says... Now, if you faithfully obey the Lord your God and are careful to follow all his commands, I'm giving you this day or today, the Lord your God will put you far above all nations of the earth. All these blessings will come and overtake you. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to chase the blessings. The blessings will chase you. If you obey the most high and nobody's perfect. We all fall, fall short. But if you have, if you put forth that effort, man, if, if, if see God knows your heart, he knows the, the intention, the motive and intentions of your heart. And I've made mistakes. I made bad choices. I even made choices to go against the most high, but the Bible always gives you a way out to repent. As a matter of fact, John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So if you repent, not just saying, I'm sorry, you turn around, you turn around from the wrong that you were doing, stop doing wrong, then things you begin to start seeing things change in your life. Sometimes it happened faster than other times. 
Sometimes it's, with some people, it takes a little longer because the most high knows the motive and intention in your heart. Because how many times somebody say, I won't do it no more. And immediately they're back into it after you forgive them. So sometimes people have to prove themselves. Right? So it says all these blessings will come and overtake you because you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Your descendants will be blessed. In other words, your offspring, your children will be blessed. And your land's produce. And the offspring of your livestock. Now, we don't have livestock, but I can say if, you, if you're a meat eater and you go to the store and you buy meats, well, your livestock <laughs> is blessed. <laughs> That's a joke. But anyway, your descendants will be blessed and your land's produce and the offspring of your livestock. And I'm going to say the meat you eat. And that's taken out of context, <laughs> including the young of your herds and the newborn of your flocks. Your basket and kneading bowl will be blessed and you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Blessings will overtake you. See, this is what it's telling you. But see, this is what we don't hear. See, a lot of times we hear so much negativity, we become negative and think that's us. We think we inherited that, but we did not inherit that. The Most High gave us a choice. When he said, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. It says the Lord will cause the enemies who rise up against you to be de defeated before you. They will march out against you from one direction, but flee from you in seven directions. The Lord will grant you a blessing on your storehouses and on everything you do. He will bless you in the land and the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. So you don't have to be black Americans. You don't have to be black. You're his holy people. The Lord will establish you. You're not establishing yourself. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. As he swore to you. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God. And walk in his ways. Then all the people of the earth will see that you are called by Yahweh's name. And they will stand in awe of you. You ever get these people, man, you go out in public and they just stare at you? Or people are just drawn to you? Or like, like overly friendly to you? It just seems like wherever you go, you make friends and not enemies. People respect you. Right? Well, that's a sign that you're blessed. But those that are children of the darkness are not going to see that. They're going to see the blessings and they're going to hate on you. They're going to attack you when you're not, you know, in that that pity party that they're into. So you have to look forward to being attacked. But because of the fact that you are his people, that he established you as his people, he's going to protect you. You have nothing. Yea, though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. There's too many so-called black Americans fearing evil. And because you fear evil so much, evil overtakes you. Because you become vulnerable, you become weak. It's like being in a position, man, or in a setting where um, demons are being cast out of people. When them demons come out, they got to find another place to go. The Bible said they look for dry places. And if they find them, they go back into the place from which they came from. If there's nothing there to protect them. If you have not received the Holy Spirit of Yah. So if you're in a position, man, or if you're in a setting where demons are coming out. They will end up in you. Because you're fearful. Because you're vulnerable. Because you're weak. 
And there's so many so-called black Americans, man, that's vulnerable, that's weak. And they have opened themselves up to demon possession. So now you live in a defeated life. Now you see generations, your children, being placed in chokeholds and crying out in their father or mom is not even there to help them. That's a bad position to be in. So all these curses that Deuteronomy talk about is not for all black people. Because all so-called black people are not the same. Again, all so-called black people are not the same. The Lord will make you prosper abundantly with children, the offspring of your livestock, and the lands produced in the land of the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his abundant storehouse, the sky. In other words, the skies are, are the limits to you. To give your land rain in its season and to bless all the works of your hands. Bless all the works of your hands. In other words, whatever you do, whatever you put your hands to do, be it if, you have your, if you're self-employed or if you work for corporate America. And you got black people that refer to work or a job as, as slavery. Well, that's what it is to you. That's how you see it. That's how you view it. You've accepted slavery. But to other people, they view that as a curse. Because the works of your hands will be blessed. And you will be able to get the things, not only the things you need, but the things you want in life. So when you drive that, new car, you have that house and you can just go out and just buy random uh, electronic equipment for GP or if you go to the casino, if you do that and you can go there and play slot machines and people are looking at that like, well, that's wasteful. I would do this and where are you getting that money from? Well, because you bless. The most high bless the works of your hands. I'm not talking about selling drugs. I'm not talking about stealing. Those are cursed hands. And that's why you have to watch your back. That's why you fill in the prison system. And then you blame it on the system. You blame it on God. You blame it on your parents. Everybody but yourself. So Deuteronomy 28, man, it's easy to quote that to people and talk about how black people are cursed. But if that's what you accept, then that's your life. That's not my life. That's not my son's lives. That's not their children's lives. As long as they keep the most highs, laws, statutes, and commandments. And a lot of times, we may not even know his law, statutes, commandment, but he knows it's in our heart. It's in our nature. We're good people by nature. We're not evil. We know right from wrong. And when you choose the right path, man, then the universe is going to work accordingly. Whatever you send out is going to come back to you. If you send out negativity, negativity is going to come back to you. If you speak curses, curses will come back to you. And curse will follow or, or, or affect everyone that hears you. When someone speak a curse towards me, I reject it because that's not mine. It bounced right off me. It has no effect on me. And I want to I wanna, uh, speak on something that I found to be pretty interesting. The 12th verse says, The Lord will open for you his store, his abundant storehouse. I told of a vision that I had, and it's on my uh, Fearless J1111 channel and my dream channel. But I told when I was out in the universe with these angels, they were black angels. And I said to one of these angels, I said, I want I said, I want to see the storehouse, you know. I wanted him to show me the storehouse. And he said he couldn't do that, right? But they took me up and go check out the Dream Channel or my Fearless J and you will see that that um that video. But I, I mentioned about that storehouse. You know, I wanted to see that storehouse, but they said they couldn't take me there, right? But um, but it's just interesting. 
that the Most High, his blessings is upon those who receive it. His curses are upon those that receive it. Both blessings and curses come from God. I'm going to repeat that. Both blessings and curses come from God. It's a choice you have to make for your life and for your family. Now, in the situation of that young boy, I don't know his situation. I don't know his life. I don't know the life of his family. You know, I don't know if he was told before. It doesn't mean that they have to put him in a choco. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that justifies it. But if he was told to leave and he needed a license and they were cracking down because when they had him in a choco, man, they were also, after they had him cuffed, they were like kicking the bottle of water. They were mean, man. These dudes were mean. You know, they were punks. But they was kicking the water off the off the bridge and whatnot. So... We don't know what happened before that. We don't know how this young man responded to them when he said, you got, you got to pack up and leave. Right? So there's a lot we just don't know. I had a reaction to that because I just don't like what I saw. We all had a reaction when we saw that, but I can't just say that's a result of a curse. I can't say that young man is cursed. He's got business in his mind, but he just didn't have the license. See? And that's where his his family come into play because it's like, okay, you want a license? I'll get you a license. So that he won't have to be in that position. Pay the money. Get the license. Get the business license. Do it right. Right? So it says, the Lord will open for you his abundant storehouse, the sky, to give you land, rain, in its season, and to bless all the works of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. Now, this whole 28th chapter is speaking of the nation of Israel, the Israelites as a whole. But you could also be blessed as an individual. You understand? And that's why I say that there's a lot of so-called blacks had accepted that curse and they really don't have to because that's not them. They're blessed. They're not cursed. They're just making bad choices. They're listening to the wrong people. Right? So you could be blessed as an individual. Your family will be blessed because if you think back, if you study the scriptures and you think back where um when Lot... Like when those angels came and, you know, them, them homosexuals came to the door and was about to tear it down. Before all that transpired, the Most High was talking to Abraham. And Abraham was sort of pleading for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, say if you find like so many righteous. Now listen to these words. If you find Say three righteous with. Would you spare the city for one righteous person's sake? Meaning not everybody is going to be right. Not everyone is living right. You know, not everybody is a righteous person. So what if there's like one righteous person there? Would you spare that city for one righteous person's sake? And the Most High made a promise that I would spare that city for one righteous person's sake. But what happened was that righteous Lot and his family, them angels said, leave. We are about to destroy this city, so leave. So he was given backstage passes by the angels, leave, because this is what we're about to do. Get your children, get up in the morning, and go. And they went. And he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Because they the commandment was given, run and don't even look back. She looked back. See, so that just goes to show, man, that if you obey the voice of the Most High, man, you do, you do the right thing. 
Blessings will overtake you. They will automatically come to you. You don't have to look for them. They will come. And you have people, man, that's so blessed, they become spoiled. And they don't even realize they have it good. Got like two and three cars in your driveway, man. And it's not just about material possession. It can be good health. It could be the fact that you don't have to go to too many funerals. The only funerals I've been to was my father's. And I spoke on my father, right? I've been, to, I, well, no, I didn't go to my father's funeral, right? But the only funerals I, I went to was my grandfather and my grandmother and my Uncle Roosevelt before he before he passed. But I never had, I never really had to go to any funerals. In my family, never had to go to no funerals. So there wasn't really much death. I've never had to experience much death in my family growing up. I'm 58 years old now, and I never had to experience too many deaths in my family. I hadn't, but there's families out there that's always experiencing death. They're burying their young because they choose to accept that curse. And these young people growing up, and they've accepted the curse because they were conditioned to accept that curse until somebody comes along with them with information and try to help them or coach them or inspire them to change. But there's a lot of so-called black people that don't want to change. They refuse to change. They refuse to change, but yet they still stay on the bottom crying victim, crying racism. And now you have the enemies that's using racism and their own color to profit off it. They've monetized blackness. They politicized blackness. So now all they have to do is start calling people racist. You know, their, their political opponent, oh, he's a racist. And black people jump on the bandwagon because they have that victimhood mentality. They're defeated. They've accepted that curse. So it said the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will only move forward, or better yet, you would only move upward and never downward if you listen to the Lord's God's commands. I'm giving you today and are careful to follow them. And then it says in the 14th verse, do not turn aside to the right or to the left from all the things I am commanding you today. And do not go after other gods to worship them. Boom. But you have so many young, uh, so many black Americans now, and we see that on YouTube. Where you have all these black females now and black dudes, they're calling themselves soothsayers and sorcerers and priestess and voodoo and you talking about Ugon and all this other nonsense man worshiping demons calling on demons or ancestors to aid you and help you I wish I would call on some of my dead ancestors that I don't even know they could have been some of the most wickedest people but you calling on them to aid you and then you wondering why you acting all retarded and have no control over yourself. So you have black people, black Americans have accepted the mark of the beast, man. They've already accepted it. They blasphemy me against the most high. They blasphemy me against the Holy Spirit. And that's the only sin of the Bible that's unpardonable. You won't be forgiven. So you've accepted that curse. You call that curse into action in your life. So you can't blame no one but yourself. So when he tells me you need to understand that the Constitution was not designed for us and that this country is not ours, well, this is my native land. This is the native land of my ancestors. And again, not all so-called black Americans 
identify with captivity. It's because they have no idea who they are. And then he said there would be a time, but not right now. We live, he says we, so he's including himself. We live the curses of Deuteronomy. And then he talks about, and he says to me, I'm speaking as a people. He said, married 33 years, put two kids through college. I too am blessed, but that doesn't mean our people in the Bible aren't suffering from the curses in the Bible. Are you saying that the curses in the Bible don't belong to the people of color? Listen to what this dude is saying. He's saying that the people of color curses belong to them. He didn't mention anything uh, 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 about the curse, uh, the blessings. He didn't mention nothing. The blessings belong to the people of color, the so-called people of color. And that's a political term that was created by the demon craps. Taking power away from you. Since I've been born, man, we've been called Negro, uh, Afro-American, African-American, Black. And we've just, we just, Black people have just accepted it to themselves. Anything they title, you, you take it. Now they're calling themselves people of color. Which takes away political power from you. Because now they can include Latino, Arab, Indian, anybody that's not white can be referred to as a people of color. So he says, you're telling me that the curses in the Bible don't belong to the people of color that are the slaves to the Americas? Are not you and not are not me and you? No, not me. I don't accept. I refuse it. I reject it. I don't accept it. And then he says, "Are your family people? Are your family people not included in the Bible?" Yes, they are, but they're not. They're not cursed. My family is doing quite well. As a matter of fact. A lot of people think for whatever reason, my family talk about my mom, my sister, my brother, you know, all of us and my sons get it. They think we're wealthy. They think we're rich. For whatever reason, they think we're wealthy. And maybe because of the fact that we work, or we, we're self-employed and we make our keep, man. I don't get harassed by police like that. I don't. If I get pull, uh, pulled over. Like, what do you pull me over for? If I have questions, I'm going to ask. And I'm going to give them the information they ask for. I'm going to let them do their job. I'm not going to sit there and argue with them and pick a fight. And then when they yoke you up, man, you want to cry racism. Well, he didn't have to do that. Well, you didn't have to resist. And I'm not talking about that young boy that was putting a chokehold. But like I said, we don't know everything that we went up, that went on. We only saw from, from when he was in that chokehold and crying out. So we don't know everything. Yes, that video upset me. But at the end of the day, we don't know everything that transpired that led up to that. So we're not all cursed. Not everybody or so-called black people are people of a curse. I know I'm not. I'm blessed. As a matter of fact, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored in the Lord. That's my life. So like, share, subscribe. Click on the PayPal link. Support the channel. Go to my link on Teespring. And order some of my items there, right? Feedback, tell me what you think. Follow me on Twitter, Grunt Vet, G R U N T, Vet, V E T, 2012 at gmail.com. Well, you can just put, you can go to Twitter and just put in Grunt Vet 2012 or Fearless J 1111, and I'll come right up. Until next time, I'm fearless.